Okay, so the next um, talk is going to be titled Predicting Gaze in Egocentric Video by Learning Task Dependent Attention Transitions. Uh, the talk will be given by Yifei Huang, uh, also co authored by uh, Min Jae Kai, uh, Zhen Xian Li, and Yoichi Sato. Okay, um, thank you for the introduction and morning everyone. I'm Yifei Huang from the University of Tokyo, and today I'm very glad to talk about our. Uh, pro our project, Egocentric Gaze Prediction by Learning Task Dependent Attention Transition. And this work is done together with Min Jie Tsai, uh, Jin Qiang Li, and our professor, Yui Sato. So first, I would like to introduce some background on um, egocentric video and gaze. Uh, so first, uh, I'll use Toby glasses as an example. On these glasses, there is an egocentric camera facing outside. So it can uh, capture the views the same as the camera wearer. And also, there are some eye trackers on the bottom of the uh, glasses, so it can uh, get the gaze position inside this egocentric view. So in this paper, uh, we are going to, our goal is to give in a first person video. Uh, we aim to use a computer vision algorithm to predict the gaze position in this uh, egocentric video. Uh, this application, th uh, this work has several applications like uh, understanding human behaviors, joint attention estimation, and so on. So uh, there are some traditional approaches like using uh, some special egocentric cues like head motion and saliency, as well as hand location pose and hand head motion. And also with the rise of deep learning, uh, there are some works like using 3D CNNs, and it can, uh, the deep learning network can leverage all the special egocentric cues implicitly, as well as getting a better performance. Mm, however, all the ex existing approaches are bottom-up approaches. Uh, we take deep learning as, as an example. Uh, we input an egocentric video into a de encoder decoder style network and the network will predict the gaze position. So uh, in this work we want to use some top down information into this gaze prediction. So we observe some uh, videos from the GTA gaze plus data set. We found that uh, egocentric videos are often taken when people are performing some kind of task. For example, um, this people is, this person is uh, preparing some pizza and his first step is to take a pizza from out of the fridge and then he cut up some sausage and then cut up some bell pepper and so on, many steps after. So uh, we found that there are attention transitions happen during a task. Like when taking a pizza out of the bread, uh, out of the fridge, we would like, we would first look at the fridge and then take the pizza out of the fridge, so we look, then look at the pizza. And if we cut up sausage, we will first look at the knife and then we transit our attention to the sausage. So uh, we find that the transition of human attention is very much related, highly dependent on the undergoing task. So uh, we, we will think that attention transition is an ideal top-down uh, information to use. So. Uh, that's why we set our goal to integrate the top-down information into the gaze prediction. Uh, we want to combine a task-dependent model and with the bottom-up encoder-decoder style network and to predict the better predict the gaze position. Mm, so here arises two difficulties. So the first one is how to represent the target of attention. And the second one is how to model the temporal transition of attention. Um, so in order to solve these problems, we see the, uh, take a look inside the deep network. For example, if we forward an image into a deep feature, uh, if, uh, no, deep feature extractor like VGG, we will get feature maps. And these feature maps have a lot of semantic meanings, like uh, in different channels, it has different semantic meanings like object categories. And uh, in different uh, spatial location of each channel, it will represent the spatial location of uh, this category in the image. So for example, 
the 99th channel here represents the pepper in this uh, camera wearer's hand, and here the 102nd channel represents the plate on the table. So uh, we set our proposed uh, tension representation like this. So uh, since our goal is for gaze prediction, we use uh, the gaze position to model the attention. We first find the gaze position on this image. And then we also find the gaze position uh, accordingly on the feature maps. And then uh, in these feature maps, we crop a small region in the feature map and do an average pooling. And after this average pooling, we will get a channel weight vector. And this vector is a rep will represent the semantic meaning of pizza. And also, it will contain the spatial information of the pizza, uh, as well as the gaze position. So uh, for learning the temporal transition of attention, we use an LSTM to model the temporal transition of attention, since uh, this attention transition process is not a Markov process. Uh, so we train the LSTM using the ground truth gaze position of the next fixation. So we crop a same a crop and pull a same a similar uh, vector from the next fixation using the ground truth gaze position, and we uh, train the LSTM using the ground truth weight vector. Okay, so uh, from this attention vector, we would we use a very simple technique like a channel-wise dot product to get the feature, uh, get the gaze position of the next uh, of the next fixation. So uh, this gaze heat map will represent the prediction of gaze prediction gaze position in the next fixation. And here rises another question. I don't know if you can see the. Uh, the pink circle in this video, it represents the gaze position, uh, the ground truth gaze position. Uh, we, it is easy to notice that in the real video setting, the attention transition does not always happen. For example, if you look at this video, the attention at first is always on this pizza, and only in the last part of this video, the attention transit to the pepper in uh, the camera wearer's hand. So, Mm, we would like to think that the attention transition is not necessary during one fixation. So, uh, in, so we design our attention transition into two branches. First one, if fixation is happening, uh, then we directly use the attention weight generated from this fixation T, and we use this uh, dot product process to get the localization of next case. And only if there is a tension transition, we use LSTM to predict the next uh, attention, and we uh, dot product the fixation uh, case, uh, the feature maps, and get the localization of next case. And actually, in fact, instead of using a hard selection of whether it is fixation or not, uh, we actually use a software weight for fusioning the two branches, like. Since we don't know whether it, it is fixation or not, we use a fixation state predictor and predict the fixation likelihood, F, here. And we use this F to fuse the two uh, weight vectors, and we sum them and do dot production to get the gaze heat map, the gaze prediction. Uh, so here uh, represents our full model. The full model takes input of single frame, RGB frame, and uh, 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 optical flow, and we forward them to a two-stream network. And the first part is the saliency prediction model. It's bottom-up, and the, our proposed attention transition model, the top-down approach. We use a very simple late fusion technique. Uh, it contains four convolutional layers, and we fuse the uh, output of the attention transition module and the saliency prediction module. Uh, so here are our experiments. Uh, this is uh, the result comparison with different baselines. The first two lines, GBVS and Salicon, these are two uh, saliency prediction methods, one traditional and one deep learning. 
And in et al. and DFG are the two uh, gaze prediction method, one traditional and one deep learning. We can see that our uh, result gets the best performance in either AAE, average angular error, which is the lower the better, and the AOC metric area under ROC curve, which is the higher the better. And also we do a ablation study and here the SCNN and TCNN, they represent the single frame saliency prediction model using spatial stream or temporal stream. And the SP are the fusion of SCNN and TCNN. And we can see that SP gets a small performance gain. And AT means the attention transition model we proposed and the, our full model can, after the fusion of SP and AT, it gets the best result. And here we show some qualitative results because we think that it is easy to see. And, uh, this is an example of attention transition from the pizza to plate. Uh, we, if we see the top left uh, corner, the saliency prediction module, since although the saliency prediction module is trained using the ground truth gaze position, it cannot uh, know the attention transition because uh, for the module, the saliency part is always on the pizza. But if we see the next uh, three, the attention transition module and the full module, they can, direct, uh, they can successfully predict the attention transition and thus uh, the attention transition from pizza to plate is c correctly modeled. And we show another example. This is an example from, uh, actually this is an action of putting the cup on the, on the table. So the camera wearer will first look at the cup and then look at the table to put the cup on the table. And the saliency prediction model always predict the saliency region as uh, the, the place on the table, while the attention transition model and of course our full model can get uh, the attention transition from this cup to the table. Okay, and uh, thank you for attention. Uh, this is uh, a very long video for uh, uh, qualitative metrics and we are welcoming you to our poster P2A04 and thank you. Okay, we have time for one or two questions. Uh, so there's some intrinsic uncertainty in this case estimation. If there's two pizzas in the fridge, you don't know which one will be selected. Uh, so how does your method cope with that? And, or did you do anything special to uh, avoid that kind of situation? Yes, because uh, the, actually this data set, in this data set and in this setting, it's kind of a limited uh, setting. It's only in a kitchen stage and the uh, kind of action uh, tasks in, in this kitchen, kitchen setting is limited. So uh, it is kind of uh, easier for us to model the attention transition from the fridge to any, some kind of pepper or <laughs> pizza. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, over here. Um. Uh, on the other side. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in uh, uh, typical fluency prediction, you have multiple people look at the same image or video, yes. uh, but in egocentric, you have only one person, so you have a very specific type of distribution of saliency on mm -hmm. the frame. Do you think it's meaningless to so either utilize this c constraint, so trying to predict saliency that looks like your final prediction, or trying to fuse multiple people somehow onto one egocentric video? Yes, actually, this is a tricky part. If you think that uh, this is, uh, this uh, kind of gaze like saliency is not in, uh, useful, uh, it is uh, kind of, if you, actually inside this kind of uh, task dependent model, different people perform tasks uh, the same, if we have different people perform a same task, the tension transition or the gaze uh, pattern is kind of similar. And actually, if there is some people that is not 
uh, have a gaze, a similar gaze pattern. It actually ref reflects that kind of skill performance because uh, uh, this person may be like less uh, less good at performing this task. So it actually this is a kind of highly individual task, and uh, we can actually use this kind of information to do some other tasks. Yes. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again and move on to the next part. <laughs>